Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a South Korean film called Deranged. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Dr. Jai Hyuk is a former professor of biochemistry from Seoul and a father of two. He lost his life savings and job due to a bad investment he made in the stock market on the advice of his detective younger brother, Jai Pil. Jai Pil regrets squandering Jai Hyuk's money in the stock market and has apologized to him many times. But Jai Hyuk refuses to accept his apology and wants nothing to do with him. Jai Hyuk currently works as a pharmaceutical sales representative for Choa Pharmaceuticals, which involves doing a lot of menial tasks like taking his boss James Kim's family on trips. Seeing Jai Hyuk overworked and stressed all the time, his wife has offered to pick up a job to help him support the family on many occasions, but his pride doesn't allow him to make his wife work. Remorseful, Jai Pil continues to look for ways to pay his brother back. He notices strange stock activity of Choa Pharmaceuticals and tries to warn Jai Hyuk about it, but the latter doesn't want to take any more advice from his brother. Choa Pharmaceuticals has been bought by a foreign-based firm called Bronze Star, which has shut down its R&D department to cut costs. Jai Pil seeks his biochemist girlfriend and Jai Hyuk's friend Yeon Ju's help to pay his brother back but she refuses to get screwed over like Jai Hyuk. One night, Jai Hyuk finds his wife and children eating in the middle of the night, but he doesn't think much of it and goes to sleep. The next morning, an unrelated couple discovers a dead body of a woman floating in the Han River and alerts the police. The couple are traumatized by the discovery as the dead body is in a state of cachexia, i.e. reduced to skin and bones. This puzzles the investigators, as reducing someone to their skin and bones takes time, and the woman was with her family last night and went to bed with her husband before she was found missing in the morning. The police find several more dead bodies in similar condition in different bodies of water throughout Seoul, sending the media and public into a frenzy. Jai Pil is ordered to go to the Gangwon province, which shares borders with North Korea, to investigate similar cases. Meanwhile, Jai Hyuk could care less and goes to his scheduled golf trip with his boss, Kim. At the golf course, Kim keeps gulping down bottle after bottle of water. Jai Hyuk and his co-workers do not think much of it until Kim makes a run for the pond and jumps into it, almost as if some invisible force was making him do it. Jai Hyuk tries to save him but without success, and just like the other bodies, it doesn't take long for Kim's body to be reduced to skin and bones. After his boss's tragic death, Jai Hyuk returns home late to find his family guzzling water in a similar manner. By the next day, several more bodies pile up throughout the country, finally attracting the Korean government's attention. The authorities have a hard time understanding the cause of sudden death because the victims do not show any physical symptoms but look gruesome as soon as they jump into the water. At one home, the authorities find a victim dead in his bathtub with unidentifiable worm-like organisms swimming next to his dead body. The officials at the Ministry of Health examine the organisms and determine that they are parasitic horsehair worms that normally use insects as hosts. These worms seem to have mutated into a new form that allows them to infect human bodies. It is learned that the sudden change in appearance of victims after jumping into water bodies was caused by the parasites abandoning the host bodies for the water. These worms can control the human brain, and hence the infected show symptoms of increased hunger without appropriate weight gain. When the worms are mature and ready to reproduce, the infected people experience excessive thirst, and hence they jump into the river, which allows the worms to come out of their bodies and procreate. As the scientists look for a cure, the government deploys a police force throughout Korea to prevent the infected from jumping into water bodies. The government also urges people who have been in or near water and who show symptoms of hunger and thirst to rush to the nearest hospital. This results in countless people rushing to buy toilet paper. I mean, to hospitals. After learning about these developments at work, Jai Hyuk panics and rushes home as his family showed the symptoms of the disease. A team of scientists and doctors study the organism and ascertain that it is impossible to physically extract it from the host's bodies as it fuses itself to the inner walls of the small intestine, pretending to be part of it in order to draw nutrients from the host. 
Since physical extraction of the organism is not feasible, scientists speculate that the organism could not be killed by anthelmintic drugs, i.e. drugs used to treat infections of animals with parasitic worms. The scientists set up a patient group to experiment the effect of anthelmintic drugs on the organism. Yan Ju raises ethical concerns, but her superiors could care less as they are under intense pressure to find the cure. Word gets out about the anthelmintic drugs and people crowd pharmacies to get it. Matters become worse and it is discovered that using any type of anthelmintic actually causes more excruciating pain and eventual death. The government immediately releases a statement advising citizens against using anthelmintic drugs to treat the disease. In a Gangwon village, Jai Pil finds the village's chief crying at a local hospital, blaming himself for the epidemic. When Jai Pil asks him to explain himself, the chief reveals that in the spring, he saw some strangers releasing their dogs in the stream. He didn't think much of it at the time, as he thought the strangers were trying to get rid of their sick dogs. The village was days away from the tourist season, and the chief didn't want to jeopardize the year's income, so he didn't inform the authorities and collected the dog's corpses and buried them in the mountain himself. The holiday season arrived, and the tourists flocked to the village, but nothing happened. Some months passed by, and the bodies started to be discovered by the stream. Jaipil also learns about his brother's family, but is not able to be by their side at the hospital because of his work duty. More deaths later, a patient reveals that he was cured by a specific type of drug called windazole he took at home. Clinical tests also confirm the necrosis of the mutant horsehair worm. The word spreads like wildfire and the country goes insane in order to get a hold of the drug. It is revealed that only Choa Pharmaceuticals, the company Jai Hyuk works for, manufactures the drug. However, the company stopped the production of the drug last October due to poor sales. Pharmacies run out of supply within hours. Government officials contact the pharmaceutical company and demand that they increase supply. However, ever since being acquired by the foreign investment company, the machines involved in creating the drug were poorly managed and the company fails to manufacture a single pill. The company's CEO is brought for public hearing and the government requests the company to reveal the drug's composition, but the CEO says that the company's major foreign stockholders have refused to do so and the government has no legal grounds to force the company to disclose the drug's recipe either. The country's prime minister offers the company a generous amount to disclose the drug's composition. He gives the company a few hours to accept the offer and threatens them with a scrupulous audit should they not accept the offer. As the company mulls over the government's offer, people become desperate to get their hands on the drug. Jai Hyuk uses his contacts at the Choa Pharma to get a hold of the last remaining batch of the drug. However, the last remaining pills are taken away from him when a crowd of people outside the company spot him with the scarce drug. Jai Hyuk is devastated and his co-worker comforts him. Jai Hyuk's co-worker reveals that Choa Pharma released 100,000 boxes of the drug into the market before its production was discontinued, with each box containing four doses. Jai Hyuk finds it hard to believe that the market ran out of 400,000 doses within hours of the announcement. His co-worker speculates that maybe the drugs were never released on the market. Meanwhile, Jai Pil again starts looking into Choa's shady stock activity. He learns that a few individuals with no address anonymously bought all of the stocks of the company some months back when the company was not even making any profit. At the public hearing, Choa's CEO rejects the PM's offer, putting forth a counter offer. He asks the government to buy the entire company for a whopping 5 billion won. This would make the drug's composition a government property, and as its owner, the government can disclose it to the public, which would allow other pharmaceuticals to make more of it for the rapidly increasing number of patients. The price is unreasonable, and most government officials are against the idea, but the PM is under intense pressure to deliver the cure to the people, as scientists have learned that the infected people will die within a day, even without jumping into water, if they don't get the cure. Upon further investigation, Jai Pil finds one of the individuals who bought the stock of the company. The man is revealed to be an ex-researcher of Choa Pharma. Jai Pil forces the man to tell the truth, and he reveals that the entire health crisis was planned and orchestrated by disgruntled former researchers at Choa Pharmaceuticals. Some years ago, the scientists at the pharma company learned about the parasite Yan Gassi. Hoping to find a cure to other brain diseases such as Alzheimer's, the researchers began looking into the Yangasi parasite's protein that controls the brain. 
After succeeding in creating a mutant version of the horsehair parasite that used mammals as hosts, the team were set to begin their research on finding the cure of Alzheimer's when the company was suddenly sold over and new owners fired the research team. Upset and angry, some of the researchers joined forces and planned the entire crisis. They bought the stock of the company and released the parasite after storing away 100,000 packets of the drug. Because of this, hundreds of thousands of people became infected over the summer as they went to rivers for vacation. One of the scientists then acted as if he had been treated by the drug in order to raise stock prices. After learning about this, Jai Pill immediately calls his brother, and the two go to the storage where the researchers had hidden the rest of the drugs. The two brothers manage to get hold of the drugs, but someone locks them inside the building and sets it on fire. The two manage to survive, but all the drugs burn down with the building, and the researcher who told them about the building is murdered by a mysterious man. Jai Hyuk refuses to give up, and he decides to make the drug with his knowledge of chemistry. As long as he is able to create a drug with the same active ingredient as windazole, he should be able to treat his family without the windazole. Yeonju ropes in other pharma companies in his plans. Meanwhile, Jai Pill's colleagues continue looking into the shady pharma company and find out that the murdered researcher was actually the head of the research team and a close friend of the CEO. The other researchers have already fled the country, and the murdered team leader was also supposed to flee after getting rid of the drugs in the warehouse. The entire crisis was premeditated and planned by the pharma's CEO and the researchers from the beginning. Unbeknownst to all of this, the Prime Minister accepts the CEO's offer to buy the company. However, as the PM is about to sign the paper, he is informed about the entire plot and the CEO is arrested. Jai Hyuk and other pharmaceutical companies join forces to hastily create an effective drug and treat everyone. Some months pass by. Jai Hyuk and his family are spending time at an amusement park, joking about vacationing abroad and the ungassy worm. Jai Hyuk suddenly freezes and turns around as the movie ends with a scene of a dead body floating in New York Harbor. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.